Hey guys, today we'll be taking a look at this 48 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Jacoper. These server rack batteries make it very easy to build out a powerful and reliable battery system. Uh, we'll go through the usual procedures today, an overview of features, we'll uh, do a capacity test, and then we'll open it up and see how it's built. Alright guys, so this battery measures 17 and 3 eighths inches wide, 15 and 5 eighths inches deep, and it's 8 and 3 quarter inches in height. This is a server rack battery. That means it's designed to be installed in a server rack, a uh, telecom equipment rack, or similar. This enclosure is a 5U enclosure. Basically, server racks are measured in the amount of units of space they take up. 1U or 1 unit is 1 and 3 quarters inches in height. Uh, and then also, this weighs in at 99 pounds. So on the front of the battery, we have the main positive and the main negative terminal. Uh, we can see on the front, this is 51.2 volts nominal. 100 amp hours, 5,120 watt hours, and it has a max discharge current of 100 amps. We can see on the bottom left down here we have a single pole circuit breaker. This is Chint brand model NXB-125. It's a 125 amp breaker. Um, this breaker does not have a DC rating listed on it. I do believe this is intended for isolation purposes, and the actual overcurrent is handled by the BMS itself. But uh, that's just something to keep in mind. I don't know that I personally would flip this breaker under a heavy load. On the bottom here we have an on-off LED, a run LED, an alarm LED, state of charge, four LEDs, a reset switch, and a series of four dip switches for assigning an address on the communications. Uh, we have a DCT port. I will have to look up what that actually means. We have a series of RJ45 and what appears to be an RJ11 connector. From left to right we have RS485, CAN, RS-232, RS-485B, and RS-485C. We have a power on-off switch. So let's take a look at what this BMS has here. We'll push the menu button. Uh, so we'll start with analog info here. See the pack voltage is 48 volts. Um, I've already discharged this battery, so this is not the way it shipped, by the way. Uh, temperature information. So it looks like we have four temperature sensors. PCB sensor and an EVT temperature sensor. So a total of six temperature sensors in here. Uh, cell voltages, you can see they're all around 2.9 to 3. Again, I already discharged this battery prior to filming this, so this is not the way it shipped. So looking at the side here, you can see we have some handles. Um, they do feel like strong handles, but I don't know that I personally would lift up the battery by these handles alone. I would lift it up by the bottom and use these handles to slide it in or out of the server rack. So it also came with these brackets, which you can mount on the side here for an additional handle or support. Uh, if you're not using a server rack, you can stack up to three of these batteries on top of each other without worrying about weight of the bottom. You can take these clamps and you can actually put them in between. Uh, so this one clamp will connect to your first battery and your second battery. Speaking of included accessories, we also have a user's manual here. It's got a variety of information on the communications port. I'm not going to go over all this uh, features of the battery. Uh, so we have a recommended charge of 20 amps, a max charge of 100 amps, a max discharge of 100 amps. So it's all fairly standard parameters really. And then we also have a communications cable with an RJ45 on both ends. So you can use these RS-485 plugs to connect this to uh, you know, an inverter, you can connect this to a computer, they sell a cable separately you can connect this to your laptop with. Then you can connect multiples of these together with this cable, so you have this cable going from the port on one of these batteries up to your next battery and so forth, uh, connecting them all together. All right, so for charging this battery, I have an Anderson SB50 connector attached, and I'm going to use this charger that I purchased from Big Battery. This is actually a regulated switching power supply, I believe. Not an actual lithium iron phosphate charger, uh, but we're going to use this anyway, and this will verify that the BMS in the battery correctly shuts down. These connectors feel so tiny after working with the SB175s for so long. It's, it's kind of comical, actually. All right, so the charger is on. We'll go ahead and turn the circuit breaker. And we're charging at about 18 amps. And it looks like we are completed charging. All right, guys, so I'm trying to connect the cabling uh, to this battery here, and I have some one aught cable. And uh, the ring terminal is just a little bit too large to fit in here. So it, it kind of fits. I can probably make it work. But uh, these terminal blocks are kind of small if you're thinking of using some thicker cabling like this. And uh, yeah, I was able to make it fit, so we're good there. But I definitely would not go any larger than a one aught size lug. All right, guys, so I've got my standard test set up here. I have the uh, cable going through a Batrium shunt. I got my display. 
We will be using the new LV6540 inverter for a load. For the load, I'll be using this space heater on low. It should pull around 975 to 1000 watts, which will give us pretty close to a 0.2C rate. All right, and we have 17.9 amps, so we'll just leave this run like this until the BMS in the battery shuts down our test. All right, so the test concluded at 99.39 amp hours. However, um, the BMS in the battery has not shut off yet. The inverter has once again shut down before the battery. So I want to restart it one more time, and I want to see what kind of voltages on the individual cells we're seeing on this display. All right, so our inverter shut down when the cells were around 2.7 volts there, so... And now we're reading 101.13 amp hours on the display. So is it fair to say the battery passed this test knowing we restarted it? I think so, considering the inverter shut down before it was supposed to, but, but uh, I'll let you guys be the judge of that. So to open this battery up, there are a series of nine screws. They are Phillips screws, which line the perimeter of this lid. All right, so quick glance, we see we have three rows of cells. There are 16 cells here. This is a 16S battery. Uh, so turning it around, looking from the back here, uh, our main cabling is six gauge silicone insulated wire, 200 degrees Celsius insulation rating. This is very standard on most of these batteries. Looking a bit closer, we can see some inductors there on the right. Got a large heat sink. I'm not sure what exactly that is for. On the right hand side, there are all kinds of cables there plugged in. The bottom cables are going to be for the communications ports. Uh, the upper cables are going to be the temperature sensors and the balance leads. Over here on the right hand side, again, number six wire. We have the main positive coming out of the battery pack. It's going straight down to that circuit breaker down there. We've then got one positive lead that comes up to the terminal. And we have a separate smaller positive here. This is a number 16 silicone insulated wire, which comes off the battery pack uh, and then goes over to the BMS. So I'm guessing that's the power for the BMS itself. All right, so I pulled all the screws out of this cover plate here. You can see all the BMS leads are coiled up in here, nicely packed away. Um, they are tied down with some zip ties. We have some spiral wrap for protection over here. They're very careful to make sure wires cannot rub at any sharp metal surfaces in here. This is very, very nice craftsmanship. So I do want to see if I can pull these cells out. So I got this metal bracket off. And then I think I got all the screws out securing this down aside from the four on the side of the top bracket here. All right, so change of plans. It looks like these cells actually slide in from the front. So I need to remove this front panel. I am going to do that because I do want to get a closer look at the BMS, but I'm probably not going to remove these cells. Look at that. That is cool. So here's a look at the components from the inside of the lid. We've already covered the circuit breaker. Um, I believe these inductors here are used for current limiting of the BMS. This bottom board down here has all the communications ports, so all these cables are connecting this communications board back to the main BMS. Um, we've got our on-off switch over here in the corner. All of these leads are balanced leads except for the black ones, which are labeled 1, 2, 3, and you can see here's number 4. Those are going to be the four temperature sensors which go out to the battery pack. And then underneath there you can see that silver piece is the heat sink for the MOSFET transistors. I am curious what this thing is here because I don't know if it's a fuse or it's like wrapped in electrical tape. No, it's just a little butt splice connector. No fuse. Oh, that would have been cool if there was one, but uh, so next I do want to take a look at these battery packs here. So each one's got a lid that comes off. Just pull a bunch of them off and see what we have in there. Guys, this is super cool. These are actually all bolted together. There are no laser welds or anything like that. So. If you did want to break this down into cells for whatever reason, or you wanted to replace cells, um, it is completely serviceable. Of course, I wouldn't recommend that personally, but it is serviceable. These are actually rather large posts and flange nuts. Um, I don't even know what size to guess that is. Maybe an M8? Or maybe even a little bit larger, but there's a very thick piece of metal. This piece of metal here is the series connection. And then over here we can see a thicker bus bar, which is adjoining uh, this column to this column. You can see all of the balance leads are nicely zip tied up. Absolutely nowhere in here where we're going to see wire rubbing. Even over here on the left hand side you can see how they're all nicely tied up there. So I'm very impressed with the build quality of this. I have absolutely nothing negative to say. One thing we always want to check is that the low temperature charging protection works and it does not allow charging below freezing. So I've pulled out just a random temperature sensor here. I'm going to clip my clamp meter onto the positive here. We'll turn on the charger. 
I uh, will turn on the charger and then dip the sensor in some frozen water and just make sure it shuts down. And we are charging at 18.3 amps. Well, it does not appear to be shutting down, guys. That is not, uh, that's not expected. Alright, so looking at the front, we are seeing negative 1 degree Celsius. However, the manual indicates this will not shut down until negative 5 degrees Celsius. So I got it down to negative 3 with an ice pack that's been in the freezer for a very long time. Just can't get those last two degrees here to see what happens. That's kind of unfortunate. Guys, I just cannot get those last two degrees Celsius. Um, I'm at negative 2.4 now. I'm not really sure what else to do. I obviously can't fit the whole battery in the freezer, and I don't think it's going to be cold enough to leave it outside overnight, so... Alright guys, so there we go. Very, very impressed with the build quality, very impressed with the craftsmanship. I have nothing bad to say in terms of the build itself. It's a little bit disappointing that we couldn't test the low temperature charge protection, uh, but that's more of a problem with my testing methods and the battery itself. Not quite sure why it's set for negative 5 degrees Celsius instead of 0 degrees Celsius, but other than that, it's, it's pretty much perfect, so... I think my plan for some of these batteries long term is I really want to gather some additional data to see how long they last. So I'll likely put them out in my battery shed, put them in service in a production system, and then maybe as each battery approaches the one year mark, I'll pull it out, retest it, and then we can see what the capacity difference is between the initial test and one year later. I always get asked about prices in these videos. This battery sells for $1,700, which comes out to $332 per kilowatt hour. I did look a few minutes ago and there are still 59 of these in stock and they did let me know that they are expecting another container full uh, in about a week or two here so there'll be plenty of these in stock. As usual feel free to leave any questions or comments if there's anything you think I missed or you want to see more on. Otherwise please hit that like button before you go and thanks for watching.